This is Badshai Masjid in Lahore. It is one of the most amazing buildings that Muslims ever built. Assalamu alaikum, this is your brother Muhammad Al Shed, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about one reason why I believe Muslims are amazing. Um, I'm also going to be giving you three practical tips if you're one of these amazing Muslims on how you can become even more amazing inshallah but before I begin I want to make three points um, because you know there's so much hate and negativity out there around Muslims and stuff um, I wanted to just clarify three points before I get into why I believe Muslims are amazing right so the first point is that by me saying Muslims are amazing I'm not making a point that there are not non-Muslims who haven't achieved great things. If you look throughout history, there's so many technology, there's so much historical stuff, there's so much uh, science and stuff that non-Muslims have done great work on, right? So just by me making this video, I'm not saying any of that. The second point is that I know in our Ummah, there are massive issues. We have major problems. Uh, there's so much we could do better. Uh, and we have a few messed up Muslims as well, right? So uh, I want to make that clear. And then the third thing I want to say is that I believe just by the fact that a person worships Allah, loves the Prophet ﷺ, and does righteous actions, that alone means that person's amazing. So my, my, whole, uh, my whole thought around making this video isn't to talk about that element, but it's to highlight something that I've seen after speaking to thousands of Muslims uh, in person, over the phone, on LinkedIn, uh, across social media, like actually speaking to people, there's certain things that I've seen, certain patterns that I've realized after speaking to them, right? And that's what I wanted to share with you today. So, the one reason, which is an additional reason, why I think Muslims are amazing is because they are filled with compassion and selflessness. Compassion and selflessness, right? Now, if you look at it, you, you'll find that there's some real big evidence for this kind of stuff um, outside the general thing. So, for example, um, I think it was earlier this year or last year in the UK, they did a study and they found that Muslims give more charity than anyone else in the UK. That's a fact, right? And I'm sure it's probably like that in other parts of the world as well. So this is the kind of thing that I found um, that the reason I'm saying this is because when it comes down to it, I started speaking to Muslims about what they wanted to do in their life, what kind of things they want to achieve, what they want to do with their businesses and all this kind of stuff. And what I realized is that, um, you know, while speaking to people, you kind of get into their world, you delve into their dreams. And almost all the Muslims I speak to, every one of them, they all want to do something outside of themselves. They want to do something for the Ummah. They want to do something meaningful. They want to do something for the benefit of humanity. Um, and I think this is a wonderful, wonderful quality um, to want to benefit others, to want to give your time and effort uh, to go and help someone else. And Alhamdulillah, I've been in volunteering in Muslim organizations and stuff for about 15 years, I think, uh, maybe a bit more now. And I've just found that there's so many Muslims out there who give their time, who dedicate their lives uh, to helping others. Uh, and I'm so impressed by it. And I'm talking about people who are like in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, but even people who are like young teenagers, even them, they, they feel like they want to do something amazing. They feel like they want to give uh, to the Ummah. They feel like they want to help Muslims, non-Muslims. They want to give good and they want to do good, right? Um, so I thought this was, this was amazing. And I think that, um, you know, I just want you to acknowledge uh, every one of you that has this mindset of of giving for the sake of Allah, compassion, selflessness, uh, and inshallah, your your reward is with Allah for sure. You know, um, you know, most Muslims they want to help the Ummah, but they don't know how. So um, I want to help you to give. Uh, I want to help you by giving you three steps uh, to doing exactly that and to get much better at giving, inshallah, uh, and for you to give something that's going to be even better, inshallah. So. The three steps. The first step I would advise, let's say you do have that mindset, you want to give, you want to help others, um, and you're wondering like, how on earth do I do it? Because it may be that you're not that, you know, you're not that experienced, you don't have that much, you're really kind of lost. A lot of people I speak to, they don't know that um, what they should be doing. So step one, figure out your passion. Figure out your passion. Okay, the question I ask most when I speak to people is, what are you passionate about? Okay. The reason for this is because passion is the thing that will keep you going. Passion is what drives you. It's what you do automatically 
even when things get hard so things are really really hard uh, you're facing obstacles but you still go out and do it right so what you're passionate about is really really important okay so how do you figure out your passions right so if it's about figuring out passions how can you do that so what I would say is start thinking about what do you love doing okay what would you do anyway like even if you weren't getting paid even if it wasn't your job what do you love doing so for me one of the things I love doing is actually uh, speaking and helping people right so speaking is something that I do a lot of I guess um, what do you spend your time and money on right if you look at the last uh, week of your time where have you spent most of your time if you look at the last thousand dollars thousand pounds that you spent where did you spend that money these things will give you clues about what you're passionate about because if you're spending lots of time on something it means that there's some sort of passion there if you're spending lots of money on something that means that there's some sort of passion in there so i would say that look at the time and money that you're spending um the other thing you can look at is things like books movies uh, things that you're watching think about like what your favorite book is what is your favorite movie what is your favorite uh, tv program and then and then kind of use that to delve deeper into why is it that you love that book why is it that you love that film is there a specific reason is there something that happens is there a character is there something that the character does like think about where you're kind of giving your attention and why you love it so much um, and then also like think about what do you always talk about what are the things um, that you're constantly talking about like if I was around you right now uh, and we were together for 10 12 hours like what would you talk about most what are the things that you're interested in right um, and it could be anything it's very very important to say that people think that it has to be something like Quran and noble and this and that I I'm gonna say to you that there's so much good you can do even if you feel that it's insignificant even if you think that this is something that's kind of you know not related to benefiting people how could I do that we're gonna to come to that later on right but just get clear on what are you passionate about what will you continue to do uh, no matter what so for example my passion is uh, is helping people to grow and to develop themselves to develop their businesses to kind of move them forward right my other passion is communication so I help people to better their communication uh, and increase their confidence um, this is something that I've been doing long 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 before uh, I ever received any payment for it or I had any business or anything like that it was something that I kept doing and helping people to grow themselves to develop themselves to do training and do all this kind of stuff I was doing it for so many years uh, without anything because it was just a natural part of me it's like if someone loves football right they're just gonna play football no matter what they'll just play every time they'll try and find a way to play so this is the same thing that um, I would advise that you know you kind of look at and understand yourself um, and of course you can go and ask other people and, and they can give you uh, tips on what they think it will be as well so that's step one figure out your passion now step two is figure out your strengths okay so people obviously they say develop your weaknesses right and I agree with this because I believe that we want to be balanced human beings right and we want to excel at everything that we do um, but there's certain things that you are naturally good at okay so you know there's this things over time over your life you've built certain skills which are really really strong and really good right and it's easier for you to become great at those skills rather than you taking a weakness and then working on that right so because you're gonna kind of be this superhero who wants to help other people and benefit other people it's better that you have a strength which you're really really great at rather than having a weakness that you're average at right so how do you figure out your strengths now the first thing I would advise is that you write out a list of things that you're great at okay now it could be anything right it could be eating kebabs it could be absolutely anything but you need to write a list of what you're great at okay um, so just write a list put everything down uh, that you're great at the second thing you can do is ask people that you know what they think your strengths are now it might be that you're not great at something right but there's certain things which you do better than other things so go to other people that know you your friends your family and ask them what do they think your strengths are because they will be able to give you a perspective that you can't have because you're looking at it from inside whereas they're viewing you from outside and so you might find that people will give you something that you didn't think about so for example like um, you know sometimes when I get into arguments with people um, they would say to me oh you just simplify everything too much right everything you're saying in an argument you're simplifying it it's not that simple and then later on I thought 
you know what, this is actually a strength that I have. Of course, there's a weakness as well in arguments, but being able to simplify things is a strength that I have, and I only learned that because someone else said it to me. So asking other people is very, very important uh, about your strengths. The other thing you could do is you could look at your life and look at the things that you've been through, right? Look at the uh, experiences that you've had. Maybe, you know, as a child you were bullied. Maybe you learned a lot from that. Uh, maybe that you've, uh, you know, kind of uh, had a lot of family problems and you've discussed things a lot. Um, maybe you've done certain jobs. Maybe there's work experience that you've done. But all these kind of things will help to identify where are the areas that you are strong at, right? So next thing I want to do is a timeout. Before I go to step three, um, I just want to remind you to subscribe to our channel because we produce lots of amazing videos, lots of content about growing yourself, about growing your business, improving your life. Um, and if you're getting any value and you're still here, it means that this video is something that's useful for you. So please like the video, please share it. And of course, please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss anything, inshallah, and you can help others to benefit too. Right, so let's move on now. We said step one was figure out your passions. Step two, we said, is figure out your strengths. And step three is figure out where the demand is. Figure out where the demand is. So knowing your passions is uh, really, really important because it's the fuel for you. Aligning to your strengths is the thing that's going to help you to excel and do really, really well. But the critical element is for you to work on areas that people really care about. Make sure that there's really demand for what you're going to do. Okay, so how do we figure out demand? The first thing I would say is look at the problems related to your passions and strengths, right? So let's say, um, you know, uh, there's, a, there's something that you love doing, like let's say you love playing football, right? What are some of the problems that are related to football? Maybe it's like young people trying to get into football. Maybe it's uh, facilities for playing are not really there. Uh, maybe people can't afford to play football. Like look at the actual... Uh, passion that you have the strengths that you have and then look at the problems that are related to them right the other thing is look at where people are spending money so again if you are passionate about football you could look at where are all the places where people spend money for football um, the third thing is look at solutions related to what your passions are about okay so the problems we talked about already look at what's on offer in the industry and and through going through all of that and understanding what your passion is understanding what your strengths are seeing where people really care about it should start to give you some idea of how you can go out and benefit people okay now that's the that's the three steps for kind of helping you to discover but as a bonus tip i want to tell you how you can basically work to master these things because knowing your passions knowing your strengths knowing the market demands uh, these are the steps which are going to help you to identify exactly what you should be doing but after this the real work begins right so in order for you to do that what you need to do next once you figure it out is you need to learn the trade okay you need to learn the trade and learn it from those who have already done it so for example um, let's say that you want to do something. The first thing I would do is I would go out there and do massive research, right? I'd go out there, I'd look at internet videos on how to do this. Uh, I'd read up blogs, I'd read up uh, Google, and just spend as much time as you can getting to know how to do this. Because you don't want to make the same mistakes that other people have made. You want to learn from other people's experiences. You want to have accelerated learning so that you can get to your destination faster. And the best way to do that is to learn from others. So go out there, learn the trade, use the internet and get out there, right? The second thing is practice. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect, right? So what you need to do is you need to go out and get experience and get real experience. Get as much experience as you can. Um, so when I first started out helping people, you know, I really, really wanted to help people out. I didn't really know what to do, but I just wanted to kind of help people uh, in some way. And I remember I was very lucky, alhamdulillah, someone at my workplace said to me, hey, why don't you go to this charity I heard of? It's called Muslim Youth Helpline. Go out there, speak to them and, and really see what happens. So I went there. I found out what about it. It was a really, really amazing setup that they had. Um, and I joined the helpline and I started to. Uh, kind of do counseling but at that time I didn't really know what it was about I had some training I learned a little bit about it but then it was about getting real experience and that's what I did I got on the phones and I tried to increase the time I was spending there as much as I could get more and more and more and more experience because the more you practice the more you do it the better you'll get at it. right but 
if you keep practicing keep practicing keep getting more experience and you don't do the third thing you'll never achieve mastery so the third thing that you need to do is improve and iterate improve and iterate right so by you going and doing this thing like imagine if i was doing counseling but i was never looking at what's going on in my counseling what am i doing well what am i not doing well changing my approach these are the things that you need to do so once you get into this habit of taking action learning practicing you need to review yourself you need to say right this thing that i'm doing has it got any better better what's the bad thing about what i'm doing what do i need to do to get to the next level and if you keep improving keep iterating what you'll find is that you'll le re you'll reach a level of of mastery that most people in your industry or in the thing that you want to do will never ever be able to do because you're constantly improving yourself so these are the kind of things I want to recap um, you know the first thing I said is that Muslims are amazing because they're so they're so selfless they're so compassionate and they're so willing to help other people you know alhamdulillah so I was saying that to help you discover uh, exactly how you can give to other people I would say figure out your passions the things that you really really care about figure out your strengths these are the things that you're really good at or you're at a good level at already and then figure out the market demand figure out where you can really help people and if you do those three things then you know what kind of areas to go out and help people and don't think of anything as insignificant right if it's halal and if it's good and if it's benefiting the people this is amazing because just for benefiting the people you know there's a huge huge reward in that inshallah and then I was saying that once you figure out what you want to do then it's about you going out there learning from the mistakes of others learning from the resources that we have going out there practicing and then most imp importantly improving and iterating on the kind of stuff that you're doing so I hope that this has been a beneficial video for you I pray that Allah makes it easy for you to help others and accepts it and rewards you without measure Zakala khair for watching <laughs> Da 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 da